Okay. Top 20 at Worlds. Number one. Look, I got called out for this on Reddit because people people actually, the like Reddit was pretty positive to my um, tier list of teams. And they said, I wonder who's going to be number two because we all know Viper is going to be number one because Dom just loves Viper. And it's true. I do just love Viper. I think Viper is so good, bro. I, I don't know what to tell you. I think Viper is so fun. All right. Anyways, number two. Chovy. I think Chovy is, is number two. Now, I'm not sure if the meta like shift is going to be great. We'll have to see what the meta ends up being. But yeah, I have Chovy number two. Yeah, he's a beast. Just absolutely insane. I think this guy is, is crazy good. Number three, it's the fucking goat. Dude, what did what did Tian do wrong, bro? What did Tian do wrong in people's eyes? Look, I get it. He choked last year at Worlds. I'm telling you, as the president of the TN hate club, I wanted this guy to not succeed at the beginning of, of this split. Uh, the beginning of, of this year, I should say. Beginning of, of, of spring. I wanted him not to succeed. He's just too good. He's just too good. He played so well every game, bro. He converted me from being the president of the TN hate club to the president of the fucking TN. You're the fucking goat club. Number four, ruler. Ruler is also really good. Ruler is, is also really insane. Yeah, I mean, he just had insane performances. I think the meta, like he was playing the meta well. He had good, good synergy with Lehens. I view ruler in, in super high regard. Um... If you think Ruler's better than Viper, I think that's fine. If you have, as long as you have these roughly in your top, like four, top five, I'm good with it. I'm good with it. Number five, three, six, nine, three, six, nine, bro. He's just nine, 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 nine. That's what we're putting here. Nine, 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 because he's only nines, bro. He only rolls nines. All right. Number six, we have your goat. What, what did Raz say? Is Raz in my chat? Where is Jojo? This list is fraudulent. We're just doing all, all nicknames. Goatian, you goat. We got, all right, seven. And most of this reasoning is before. I have Knight. I think Knight is kind of getting slighted by the world right now. I, I think people are, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty negative about this guy where I think he, he was good. I mean, he wasn't the best mid in LPL, but he was good in a lot of the games. I mean, there was definitely games where he played better than, than Yigao. And yeah, I mean, I think that he had some, some very solid picks that ended up doing work for him. Like he had a really good swaying game uh in, in playoffs and i mean he was close bro like i think if they win then everyone's list just changes right like if, if knight shows up more than your gal in game number five i think the series is actually this close if knight shows up at a super high level in game number five both times i mean he did he did show up in game five Let, let's not rewrite history he showed up in game five jackie love just fucking ended if he showed up in game five of the first series and like was able to like win you know like when they had that big lead there he's able to win i think that he's just above your gal and everyone's uh tier list going into worlds all right number eight we got kanavi yeah i mean the early game just insane i mean this is yeah, yeah, I'm just I'm I'm really high on all these guys. Yeah, I have I have JDG as the best team in the world coming into this. So I I JDG then then Gen G. It's like slight slight percentage. Like I, if if I were to say like percentages to win worlds, let's say like there's no one that has like actual 50% to win worlds. Let's say the highest two percentages were like 30% to win worlds and 29%. I would be like 30% to to JDG, 29% to to Gen G. It's like that close in my mind. Next up, I have Peanut. I have peanut you know this is this is just part of, of what i think about the meta right now right like people are gonna say oh you have no supports in your top 10 yeah I have no supports in my top 10 and the reason why i have no supports in my top 10 is i feel like there wasn't enough skill expression in support to actually make me like they, they didn't have enough agency to to make me want to put them over players that have more agency and are like doing super well if you're playing fucking lulu and yumi and your 80 carry is viper or your your 80 carry is ruler then like you just don't get insane credit when they pop off. Like it just is what it is. It's part of a part of the meta and like part of what you have to do. Ogala number 10. Yes, sir. Number 11. Zhao Hu. I mean, I actually, actually I, I'm going to reverse this. I'm going to reverse this. I'm going to reverse this. I'm going to put Zhao Hu up here. I, I rate Zhao Hu highly, bro. I, I, this is what I, I thought before. And then like the more I think about it, the more I'm, I'm just going to put Zhao Hu. I think he's just the best player on RNG. I think he is the best player on RNG. He played so well, man. Like, I, I don't know why people are trying to slight Zhao Hu because his team is like, griefing him like way way was not playing well in playoffs like he just didn't have a good read on the meta he was useless in a lot of the games like it's just not a ming meta like jahu and gala are still really good i think gala is not nowhere close to as good as viper which is i think is reflected in this list but i still think he's insane you know what the problem i have with this though is because you want to like do the ratings like this like you, this is what you'll think is fair but then like try to ask yourself this question do you even think that like a jungler can ever be better than than an 80 carry at League of Legends. It's like so hard to, this is something that you have to think about. Like with the meta right now, being all these dog junglers, even if TN plays super well, like let's say we were just gonna say who is better at the game of League of Legends. For me, 
I'm putting like Gala over Tien. Like I'm putting like Gala, I'm putting like Knight, I'm putting all of these guys over like all the junglers and the supports actually. Because like to play AD carry is just so much harder than to play jungle most of the time. If, if you're just gonna go who's best at League of Legends, you could just delete all supports and, and, and jungles completely and just end up on the top 20 with no supports and, and junglers. Like almost no support player is as good or, or a jungler is as good at the game as a mid laner in AD carry. But I feel like just, if you go with that, then you're not giving the people what they want. They want to like compare people within their role and like what they're doing, not just overall who is better at League of Legends. It's a very like idealistic view of things. Missing. Yep, I'm missing up here. The highest uh, support on my list at 12, 13. I have Zeus. And I've, I've given most of my reasoning for like these um, picks. So I, I think the top lane is actually pretty weak at this tournament. I think that these are not some of the best top laners in the world. So for example, if I was going to go like, who are the best top laners in, in LP? I mean, I would, I would probably say Bin with his recent performances was up there. Like he was really smurfing, but he's just not at Worlds. Um, I would love to see Bin versus Zeus again. I think that if you were going off like how they played towards their, the end of their time, like I, I thought Bin was doing the most. Oh, wait, sorry. I don't have, I don't have Zeus here. Wait, I missed one. Cause I moved, I uh, moved uh, Scout around. Sorry, I have Wayward here, and then I have Scout, and then I have Zeus. My bad, my bad. Because I moved um, Scout down and Jahu up, and then I just like forgot where I was. Okay, then where? Well, then who do I have? I have Lehens, and then I have sixteen Hope. I'll just do the whole list right now, and then we can talk seventeen. Mark, Ming, nineteen. I had Scout fourteen, fifteen. Oh wait. I, I had Zeus uh, here, sorry. 19, and then this is 20. Cause I was like, wait, where's the, where's the person I'm missing on my list? And then last I'd breathe, this is what I have. Yeah, I, I had Zeus 15, or sorry, I had item 16. Um, when I moved Yahoo up, I just lost track and my numbers were weird. So I just missed him um, in my list. But yeah, that's, that's my list. So Eastern supports with no agency higher than Western players with agency. Well, yeah, I mean, I do think that like Lehens was super good. I, I mean, I think that Lehens was super good. I think Mark, May I think that these guys actually played well, but I think that their role is just worse. So I have like a lot of uh, supports towards the end. Owner is super good, bro. I actually, do I don't see why people think Owner is so good. I feel like Owner is, is lost on the map. I, I don't, like when I see Owner play, so this is like the distinction here, right? When I watch Peanut play, when I watch like TN play, when I watch Kanavi play, I feel like they always know what, what they are doing, but it feels like, when I watch owner play, he's like kind of just like responding to things. Like he doesn't have a plan. A part of, of, of being a jungler is just knowing how you want to progress the game. How do you want to win the game? And like, I'm sure he does have that, but then like clearly things will falter in his plan. And then I feel like he just ends up just in no man's land where he's just like walking to like this lane, walking to that lane. Like, I don't feel like he's poised to like make plays. Like when I was watching Peanut play versus owner, obviously Peanut has better lanes. So this is going to contribute to it. But even factoring in the fact that Peanut has better lanes, it feels like Peanut can just do whatever he wants at any point in owner. He can just do any point. Like he could just do whatever he wanted in any of those games in owner. And owner just like has to just try to respond to plays. Owner seems a bit lost, but has these big team five moments where he pops off. Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, he he has good mechanics for sure. I mean, Owner has better mechanics than probably like top three on this list. You could maybe argue Kanavi, but Owner is certainly better mechanically than somebody like Peanut and some or somebody like Tien. But like right now, based off what we saw, that's like, that's not very important right now. It's not a meta where your jungle, the level of your jungle's mechanics matter. If this was like a Graves Nidalee meta, then maybe Canyon, like Canyon, Kanavi and, and Owner are top three in the world, you know? But, but it's just, it's not what the meta is. So it's very hard to like rate that because I, I think that that skill is just not useful compared to everything else. So the reason why I went from top to bottom here is I actually feel like the bottom, like the mid to bottom part of the list is actually more interesting than the top of the list because I think that you have to have like certain players in the top. So like the top of the list, I, I don't think is super interesting because like you're going to have like, ruler at the top you're gonna have chovy at the top you're gonna have viper at the top you should have tn at the top you gotta have 369 like you're you know which like who those players are where i think that later on it's like more interesting this asia only i just think that I, I think that in terms of like individual play i think asia is really far ahead this year i mean i'm somebody who is known to put too many western players in in lists um which maybe i'm overcompensating for that maybe there are some players that i'm leaving off potentially maybe like trimby over or over carrier could be a thing maybe i but i like from watching all the regions i just feel like the west is like the furthest behind it's been since probably 2017 this year so even though i do predict rogue to get out i don't think that rogue is going to get out because they are that insane i think it's just more like group draw and stuff like that in terms of individual play and team playing both yeah i mean I, well i think that this is the thing right like the the 
the individual play is probably the closest you could get with Western players. Even in the individual play, like I don't think Berserker is a better player than somebody like Viper, Ruler, Gala. Like, I mean, I think that's like, it's so hard to say that, right? Maybe you could say that he's better than Jackie Love because you just like, you're like, well, Berserker never inted and Jackie Love like, well, I mean, Berserker inted once in game three, but it probably didn't matter. You're like, Berserker never ints and Jackie Love like in sometimes. Like maybe you could like sneak him in there based on your own personal criteria. But I mean, the level of your competition matters, man. Is there a spice in this list? Well, there's some things that people considered spicy, like Jahu over Scout. And also like, what does that mean? There's zero spice in this list. You mean my, my list is like accurate based on reality and I don't just like have like random hot takes that make no sense based off the context. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna just say things just to like have like a fucking like weird take. I think maybe you could say like Canyon is, is spicy considering like that people consider this is the worst split of his career. Like, I'm not gonna just be like, oh, well, I think Caps is still the best mid in the world. It's like, he's nowhere close. And then he actually just gets on the worlds. And I'm like, well, at least it was spicy. One of the things that people don't like about JDG is something that I actually do like about JDG, which is the fact that they can like play from behind. Sure, like obviously, so there's, there's a theory that people have where if somebody plays perfectly, and they're ahead, they should always just win, right? Like, because the team that's ahead will, will probably have to make some mistakes. Obviously, it's like not like ahead 1K. I'm talking about like ahead in terms of game state. So like, let's say you outscale and you're 2K gold ahead. People will make the argument that, oh, well, if you if the other team has to make a mistake for you to like get back into the game, well, they should never make that mistake. So you don't get any credit from like coming back. But I think that something that JDG actually does super well is they know how to create action that will favor them from behind because they have like good ideas of, okay, like, this is our angle when they push this turret we're gonna tp flank here like we're gonna set up this pocket of vision even if we're down like two three k gold we can set up like this pocket of vision we'll attack the dragon like this and this is going to like give us an advantage and give us a potential to win also i think that it's important for a team to be able to to play from ahead and from behind which is part part of the reason why i have like genji lower than jdg is when genji gets like punched in the face or like they get hit in the mouth it feels like genji like doesn't respond well to that so for example the one game they lost to, to sandbox i think sandbox actually matched up pretty well into to, to gen g even though i guess they thought that, that sandbox was a bad matchup i think the way that sandbox played is similar to how an lpl team plays but it just sandbox just made like really egregious mistakes which i don't think these lpl teams will make the two most aggressive lpl teams are top esports and, and jdg and those teams don't do like the 4v5 massive ints that sandbox will do so I'm I'm unsure about how Gen G will respond to losing game states, and chances are you are not going to be playing super well every single series. So it, like if it was double limb, then I think that maybe Gen G goes higher in that. If it's single limb, I think that changes things because if it's single limb, then that means that you know like if you have one off series and you don't have the ability to come back in games where you're behind, you just lose. They understand how long teleport actually. They have a better idea around what teleport is than other people in league right now. Other people view it as like, this team has three people mid, but they have like TP top and TP bot. So they can just like join five instantly. But like JDG understands that if you do not have the people there and they TP and you make a play quickly with like more people, then that TP is not gonna come in on time and you'll actually be able to win the fight before the TP get, uh, comes in. Where I feel like a lot of teams, they over rely on the idea of like, oh, they can't punish us here because like we have TPs. So like our top laner can be top as long as he has TP. Our bot, like if, if we're in a one through one, our mid laner can be bot and like he can join the fight with TP. I think that that's something that JDG does super well. Like they understand the value of TP and like the window that you can use to exploit that. I will see you guys later. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate uh, you guys coming through, even though this was like a random stream on a Monday. Appreciate you guys being here and yeah, I'll try to continue with interesting content for Worlds. Peace. Later.